It's a live recording for bringing an image into an inventor for your automata. You're going to go to Google. You're going to search for something that you want. For example, say I want to find a boat. So I type in boat and I hit enter. I don't want to buy a boat. I want to find a picture of a boat. So I'm going to come up to this wonderful little thing called images and I'm going to click on that. Now, if I scroll through these images, they're really fun looking, but they don't really help me out much because they're very, very convoluted. There's a lot going on. So I'm going to use something called tools inside of Google Images. So right here on the right hand side is a little place you can click tools and a little drop down menu will appear. This drop down menu you can use to filter your results to something that would be more appropriate to bring into Inventor. Two main things that you are going to change, you can mess around with some of the other settings, but I'd first change the type. I'd make this type clip art. This, for the most part, is going to give us way more 2D images that are easier to work with. And then second, I'm going to go to color, and I'm going to change that to black and white. Once I do that, now I have a massive amount of different pictures to choose from that are black and white, they're vector art, and I can really use these to trace around. You have to be careful here, children, because some of these images do not work inside of Inventor. Inventor only accepts the following formats. Okay, I'll even show them inside Inventor real quick. If I create a new part and I go to sketch, inside sketch, there's this little insert panel and you can select image. Inside image, files a type, you can bring in a bitmap, a GIF, a JPEG, and a PNG. Those are kind of the four you can look at. If you find any pictures and you really, really want to use them, but they're not supported here then you might need to find an online converter that will convert the picture file you have to the picture file you want. I'll show an example of that. So I go back to my boat. What boat do I want? I don't want that boat. Boat, 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 boat. I want this boat. Yep, that's the boat I want. So I click on it. I can right click and I go save image as. I can put this image right into your U drive and let's call it boat. Now it says save as type JPEG. This could be a lie. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. When I save this, it actually does not save as a JPEG. Instead, it saves as a JPEG file interchange format, which is not. JPEG. This will not be recognized by Inventor. So it usually says right here what the extension is. It's a JFIF. I don't even know what the correct way to say that is. But I can then type in convert JFIF to JPEG. JPEG with an E or JPEG without an E are kind of the same thing. Not exactly, but they're good enough. You can go there. And then you can start looking at these online converters. I think I use the second one here because the first one just wants your credit card. So I click this one. I can say choose file. And let me go to my U drive. Boat. Boom, boom. Okay, I want it to go to JPEG and I'm going to hit convert. Uh, it'll come up. It'll say, hey, let's save this. So I'm going to save that now as JPEG. And it's starting to download. Once it's finished the download, it's finished. Now I can actually use it. This is where it gets intense. So I created a new sketch. In insert panel, I'm going to select image. You're going to find this in your U drive. Boat, boat. Look at the type. Don't grab the one you don't want. Grab the one you want that JPEG or BMP, uh, GIF, or PNG. If you straight up find it as one of those file types, 
You don't have to go through this step of converting it much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and click open. So I got my image. You're going to take it and you're going to kind of want to put the origin roughly right in the middle of it. We're going to tell Inventor exactly where it goes. But do you see how there's my square, the center, uh, the center uh, bisecting of the corners is right there. It's pretty near. I'm going to click. It's beautiful looking. I want to make sure this is centered right in there. It can do a lot of things. I can make it bigger. I can actually rotate it around. And I want to stop all that from happening. And I want to get it to the right size. You don't want to create something in Inventor and find out that you made it like smaller than a speck of dust. And you're going to be sad because you're going to do a lot of work. And Inventor can make things really, really, really small. Also, it can make things really, really large. So you don't want to find out that you made a part that was 17 inches long when you've only got roughly 8 inches of workspace left to right. So to do this, I'm going to set up the centers aligned each way. So I'm first going to grab the vertical constraint. And with the vertical constraint, I'm going to say I want the top center point of my picture. It turns green. I want that to be aligned vertically with my origin. And watch as my picture shifts to the left a bit. So now it's aligned vertically. And I have gone from four dimensions needed to two. Now I want to do that horizontally with the right side or the left side. Doesn't matter. Clicky. Click. Lined up. Now I still have the issue of size. And I can also rotate it. It's not letting me rotate right now, but I can actually rotate this sucker. So what I'm going to do now is, you can see here, I can rotate it. I don't want it to rotate anymore. To fix this, I, I can either say this top line always needs to be horizontal, or the bottom line horizontal, or the side lines vertical. So I'm just going to select horizontal, and I'm going to click the top line. I need one dimension, and the dimension is the size. Right now, as I resize it manually, I have no indication in how big it actually is. So here's how big I'm actually going to make it. So, all right, now I'm going to make sure that this is the exact size, or at least as close to the exact size as I want it. So I'm going to go into my origin folder on the left, and I'm going to project my y-axis. That axis moves up and down. And, for example, I want my boat to be about three inches on top of my box. So I'm going to take this line, and I'm actually going to create two extents of it that are one and a half inches apart to get three inches. Before I do that, I don't want this to be a solid line because it's going to interfere with my extrusions. So I'm going to click the line, and I'm going to turn it to a construction line because it's the proper way to do it. I'm going to offset this line one and a half inches each way. I'm going to make both of those lines construction. And now I can take my picture and I can resize it in between those two lines to get as close to three inches. And the reason I did these lines is because the gray space, if I just dimensioned the top of this box, that doesn't go from the end of the boat to the other end of the boat. So you want to try to get this as accurate as possible or you know, you're know you not going to be able to pull off the theme that you want. So once I get those there, it does say there's five dimensions needed. That's like the length of these lines here. If you're really upset about that, you can use the coincident constraint and just put the ends of those on the picture. And then uh, those dimensions will go away. And then the last one is that's pretty close to three inches. It overhangs a little bit here, but it doesn't touch here. So it's I could probably make it a little bit larger. So then that little gap that it goes off would probably fill in that. So I'm, I'm pretty close to that three inches that I want. So then I'll just do the last thing to mention that picture, and I'm fully constrained. It's really, really, really important that you have everything fully constrained. Because if you move your picture at all on accident and then trying to, like, get it back into position to continue tracing it is a huge problem. 
it's just very difficult to get it back and you're going to be spending time you spend a little bit of time here to set everything up right everything goes really really well okay next here's my boat i need to start to sketch out all of this curves easiest way to do the curves is the spline line but not one entire spline line so what i would do is i would do one two three separate lines i would spline them maybe actually four or five because we'll get points here at the ends of these lines if we just make it one line but we can come back and fill it that later so here's an example i'm going to grab my point tool and i'm not going to put a ton of points but i'm also not going to you know put only two or three the more points you put the smoother it will be the better it will look but you don't need to necessarily go overboard here I had saw people in other periods that were putting probably 40 points on this thing. You don't need to do that. Then you want to lock these points. Not locked. Your shape could really move away. So now I'm going to grab the spline interpolation. And I'm just going to go from point to point that I created. And I'm going to get something pretty dang close. I'm going to hit OK. So not exactly perfect, but really, really close to what I want. And that's kind of the point of this. So now I can just continue with the point tool. Uh, I didn't lock those points. So you can come back and lock them at the end. Point tool again. And you kind of got the shape that you're looking for, at least a bit. You would go through and you would trace all of these parts. Now, there's one big glaring issue here. I'm gonna... All right, so you want to make sure that when you do draw this out, that you make sure that you have at least eighth inch of thickness for parts. And now what we have to do is we identified that these don't connect. So now to connect something like this, I can just take like a rectangle and I can say over here, I can go, and I'm just going to kind of just draw it rectangle. I'm going to make sure that one, it starts on one line, and it's going to go past into the sail a bit. I'm going to dimension the thickness of this, 0.125, and then maybe I'll put the center lined up with my center there. And even though it's not fully constrained, I'm kind of okay with that. I just want to make sure there is some overlap here, so when I extrude this out, it doesn't look crazy so say i'm done with this i can finish the sketch i can go to extrude and i can start to uh, select my different parts and you want to be careful here because it actually found that there is a area that's open see i can't click in this and get it so if you look at your extrude panel and this is really important just for the rest of the year there's this examine profile problem so if i click on it it actually says that I forgot to put in a whole little line right there where the two green gaps are. So I need to go back and fix that. So I'll go back into my sketch. Now let's try to extrude this. Yeah, so there's that. Take that center part. And thickness, three millimeter. It, it, converts roughly to uh, 0.118 but I mean the board is designed to be three millimeters thick so that'd probably be the proper thing to use when you do create different parts and you hit okay the uh, sketch went away to get that sketch back if you need to continue using it you can go back into the sketch of that extrusion right click and share the sketch and it will come back for you to extrude any more parts that you may have